Hi, my name is Daryl. Welcome to my shop. Today, I'm going to take you on a tour of my workshop. Uh, currently, I'm standing on the edge of the milling area. Um, right here behind me is, I guess you would call it the processing area where I have my I table saw, my band saws, scroll saws, sanders, things like that. And then out beyond that is my assembly area where I have my workbench and my clamp rack and assorted other items. So uh, I think I'm going to try to break this up into sections. So we're going to start in the milling area. So we'll start right here at the drill press. Uh, this is a rigid, um, I believe it's a 17 inch standing. Uh, I purchased it from someone on Craigslist. Um, I got a pretty fair deal on it. Um, it works very well. Uh, my previous drill press had problems with uh, the quill uh, not running true uh, and it used to buck all over the place and this one runs good runs nice and smooth and there's not any uh, noticeable problems in the uh, in the rotation it tends to run at a pretty tight tolerance so pretty happy with that uh, part of it also this table here I got from a guy on also on Craigslist. Got a lot of things from Craigslist. Uh, and this table is really good because I didn't have one before and it's got the T-track and the fence here. It's got little T-nuts in the back uh, for adjustment. Um, it really does what I want it to do uh, for now, but I would like to add some functionality to it such as possibly some drawers or a rollaway cabinet so that I can keep all my drill bits and assorted other drill press related items right here at this station. Next up, we have my Grizzly 15 inch planer. Uh, this unit I also got on Craigslist. I really like it because my previous planer of this size uh, was a Delta 13 inch, uh, I forget the model number, but uh, the problem was I couldn't find parts for it. It was hard to adjust. It was hard to adjust the settings of the knives. It didn't come with the knife setting jig. It was just generally a problem. Uh, so I bartered that away. Before now, I got the Delta, I had a little Delta lunchbox planer. Then when I got the big four post planer, I thought, oh, well, hey, let's get rid of this. So I got rid of it, but I, after a little while went by, I thought about it and it really wasn't that great an idea. Because although this thing is great, um, a lot of times it doesn't play nice with thin materials, thinner materials, uh, more delicate items, and the lunchbox planer tends to do a better job at that. Um, Shortly after I got the Delta four post planer, like I said, I got rid of the, the Delta lunchbox planer, but I did go out and purchase a rigid unit that I got on sale at Home Depot. Um, it's great. Uh, it's currently on a flip cart, which uh, I'll get to see. We'll get to see that in a little bit. But yeah, this uh, Grizzly Planer, it's working great for me. Uh, I really like it. You know, if you're in the market for one, uh, it's a good planer. Up next is my router table. This is a homemade unit. Uh, this is an aluminum uh, throat plate. Uh, the router that I have in here currently is a Freud three and a half horsepower plunge base unit. The fence, I built, I made the fence uh, from some plans on shop notes. It did have faces on it, but the faces, I never could quite get them to go, to be as uh, flat as I would have liked, so I just chucked them. And I was going to make some more, but never really got around to that either. So basically the way the adjustments work is I have these uh, shop made knobs here and they're attached to a carriage bolt which rides in the slot here so you can loosen it and you can slide it around and lock it down wherever you need to okay getting down to the base of the unit uh, i have i put in several drawers over here uh, this drawer right here handles uh, all my wrenches and attachments and extra hardware and that man that sort of thing this next one here is all my quarter inch shank bits. 
this next one here is all of my half inch shank bits. This right here is my coping sled for doing raised panel doors. Now it might not look like much, but this puppy's made quite a few doors. You know, if there's always, uh, you know, you could buy these things, but you know, I picked this, I had these clamps, I bought these toggle clamps I bought from Harbor Freight for next to nothing. And these two pieces of wood were just scraps on the floor. You know, and it took me all of a couple of minutes. You can see it's not made of, you know, it doesn't consist of much, but it does the job beautifully. Uh, down here I have a couple of drawers with more accessories, more accessories, and this Chessmate uh, dovetail jig, which, you know, most of you probably have never heard of. Uh, you don't see them around much. There may be at some point that I could do a, a video or something on that device. That would be good. And down here, I have my additional routers. Um, one other thing to note on this router table is my homemade paddle switch. Right? It's just a little piece of half inch plywood. I cut roughly into the shape of a, of a stop sign. Uh, based upon some of the designs I'd seen commercially available out there. Um, but as you can see, this is just a rocker switch. Same thing you have in your house. So basically, I cut this here and I cut a hole in it so that you can access the on switch. So you push the on switch and when you need to turn it off, you can bump that with your knee or however, you know, and it works. Now, my router table something that I'm planning on replacing relatively soon and I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a video series on that. Um, some of the things that work about this table are that, well, it works, you know, I get plenty of things, I've made plenty of things with this table and, you know, it does the job. Uh, some of the things I don't like about it, uh, the biggest thing is really aesthetics and mobility. I only put two fixed wheels on here and two adjustable feet and it's very difficult to move it around. So uh, that's one thing that I'm going to take care of, and I'd like to do a better job of uh, making good use of the drawers and the storage spaces, uh, which I don't feel like I've you know, really made great use of it here. So as you can see, there's a lot going on in this shot here. Uh, there's a lot going on here. Um, basically, uh, we'll start with this. This is my miter saw bench that's in process. I don't know why I stopped working on it, but uh it needs some work but it did allow me a couple of storage opportunities that i'm pretty happy about i needed somewhere for my miter saw because i used to have a portable stand uh, but it really wasn't working out because the space underneath the stand wasn't useful i couldn't store anything there and uh <clears throat> i needed i needed to utilize this wall this space on this wall now i had a portable stand before because at the other shop, which was a two-car garage, I was constantly pulling things out. Everything was on wheels. I was pulling it out on the driveway. I really couldn't set anything up in a permanent location. But here, I have enough space that I can set up my major equipment in, per in permanent location. So my miter saw now lives over here. Now, you might notice that I started working on the uh, dust collection back here. Uh, that's a long-term... <laughs> That's a long-term goal, I guess. Uh, I've been doing a little bit here and there. Um, what I have here does work. I hooked it up with my shop vac. Shop vac. I hooked it up with my shop vac before my shop vac died today. Uh, but uh, it does work, and I'm looking forward to being able to do a little bit more with that. Now, uh, up here on the wall, you can see two of my lumber racks uh, up here. Um, I do have quite a bit of cherry. Um, seem like I come into that more than anything else. Uh, it's funny because once upon a time, I couldn't come by anything better than uh, pine, two by fours. Also, in this shot, you can see a couple of things on the miter bench. Uh, I have a. Radio. Also, in this shot, you can see there's quite a few other things going on, quite a few other pieces of equipment here. I've never had a radial arm saw before, but I'm hoping that I can use this to cut quick dados, load one of my dado stacks in there and see how that goes. Because I see, you know, Norm Abram and others doing things like that and 
you know, I wanted to see what that was about. So I built one into my miter bench. Also, you'll notice my Nova Comet 2 MIDI lathe. I just got this thing, and so far so good. I have an old Craftsman lathe, and it just, you know, it didn't have enough features and whatnot. And I would like to get into some more intricate turnings and that unit just didn't have the capacity. So I went ahead and I picked this up at I picked this up over the weekend and uh you know I'm excited I'm excited and looking forward to being able to use it. Now behind the lathe you can see my jet uh bench top mortiser. This is a pretty good unit. It's a pretty good upgrade from what I had before which was a Harbor Freight unit. The Harbor Freight unit, the hold down was no good, and uh, you know, it just didn't. When you plunge it into the material, it didn't want to go straight. The table was all messed up. Uh, you know, just an assortment of poor quality issues. So I got rid of that thing, and I bought this, surprisingly enough, <laughs> off Craigslist as well. well. Down here, below my miter bench, I have an assortment of items, quite a few patterns that I've made. Um, you know, when you go through the trouble of making particularly arches, you know, if you use a lot of curves in, in your uh, woodworking, when you get a good arch, a good curve template like this, it's good to hold on to it if you can. Uh, a buddy mentioned to me, you know, at what point do you have to quit? You know, at what point do you have to give up holding on to these things because you just don't have room to store them, which is a good point, but if you're not going to keep any, keeping these curves is really useful because I can't tell you how many times I've used, say, an 18 inch curve or a 24 inch curve or something like that for a stretcher on a table or a desk or a bookcase or something like that. So, you know, it's really worth, I think it's really worthwhile to hang on to these things. Now, on this side of the miter saw bench, I keep all of my handheld corded power tools, or pretty much all of them, uh, except for my Festool items. Now up here I have my biscuit joiner and my Dremel and an inspection camera. I have, also, I have the Porter Cable 4210 dovetail jig. I bought this jig one, time, one day when I was at Lowe's and I had a gift card. And I bought it because I had purchased a store brand unit and the store brand unit didn't really work that well. Uh, I tried and tried and tried to get that thing to work and it just I just never could get it to work. Uh, so I bought this thinking it would work better. And uh, I had a buddy that came by to borrow it because he was making bedroom furniture and he wanted to use it for the drawers. So after a couple of weeks he came back with it and he goes, man, this thing works great. I can't believe you haven't used it. So uh, I went ahead and tried it, and sure enough, it does work really good. Uh, this unit has uh, all of the it has the instructions. Obviously, it has an instruction manual, but it also has the hand the instructions printed right here on the sides of the unit. There's instructions here and instructions on the other side. They have these built-in router bit stops, and this allows you to get your router bit to the perfect depth every time. This was this unit is really really nice, uh, you know. If you're looking at a dovetail jig, it's hard to go wrong with this one. Now down here on the bottom, I have a rollout tray here, and I keep all of my, you know, corded drills, my uh, corded circular saw, uh, my old sanders, things of that nature down here. Underneath this side of the miter saw bench, I have all manner of scraps and cutoffs. Now this storage space right here is something that I've been lacking in all my previous shops. It's really nice to have this here because even though it does look a little messy, um, this is the most organized I've ever had my cutoffs and it's really great to be able to walk over here and, and rel relatively be able to pick out what you need. This right here is my Performax 1632 drum sander. Uh, this unit is uh, a very nice unit to have. I also bought this on Craigslist. Uh, it's very useful because there are certain types of woods that are very difficult to to plane. Uh, 
um, whether you're using a planer or a hand plane. Um, if you just need to take off a little bit, uh, this machine excels at that. There are so many times where I take some, I've taken a small, a small piece of wood that I just need to take off just a little bit and put it through the planer and had disastrous results. This right here, this right here is something that I've been wanting for a long time. It's a 18,000 BTU uh, ductless AC unit. I bought this unit online from Amazon. I paid under a thousand dollars for it. I had a buddy come out and uh, assist me with uh, hooking up the free onlines and running the vacuum test. So, I mean, this is something that's very doable. Uh, if you wanted to add it to your shop, uh, these are, you can get these pretty affordable uh, these days and it's definitely worth looking into. Now, this is a pretty important corner of the shop here. This is where I'm gonna be handling the dust collection tasks for my shop. Now you can see that I have my Harbor Freight unit here uh, mounted on the wall. I'm currently not using it because I need to develop uh, the next part of the system. Um, currently what I'm using is this Delta unit right here. Um, and it has the Delta filter on it. I'm using this Woodstock uh, dust separator unit here uh, on top of a 30 gallon, 35 gallon trash can. While it does an adequate job, uh, I would re I really think I'm going to try to build a thin uh, separator unit. What I mean by this does an acceptable job, uh, you know, it just seems like I have to empty the, the bag on the dust collector a little bit too often, you know. Um, every time, for every third time or so that I empty the trash can, I have to empty the bag as well. With the thin separators, as I understand it, based upon other videos and uh, reviews I've seen online, uh, you get very little of the uh, fines escaping the theme unit. So I'm hoping that that is going to improve uh, the dust collection in my shop. I'm also planning on running uh, four inch ducting uh, across the ceiling to a couple of different drops. Uh, at some point, um, that and electrical are two things that need to be I probably should be trying to uh, expedite, you know, move those things up on the list because I'm getting tired of dragging around cords and getting tired of dragging around this hose and, you know, but all things in time, right? On to one of my favorite tools in the shop. This is my Grizzly 17 inch bandsaw. I've tried to resaw in the past with that Craftsman bandsaw over there and it was the most frustrating thing ever, you know, and I have read the reviews and they, talked about springs and blades and all these other things and I just never really, I guess I didn't really get it. Uh, but when I bought this saw, I went ahead and I ordered a wood slicer blade from Highland Woodworking in Atlanta. And I gotta tell you, that was an awesome experience because, you know, I'm used to having to force the, I was trying to force the wood through before when I was resawing with the Craftsman saw over there. With that wood slicer, it just, flew through. It was almost scary. As this uh, thing will let me resaw up to 12 inches, which I have done, uh, and it worked very well. Um, one really nice thing about it is it came with the with the dual fence, so you can have it low, like I have it set here, and set it high for resawing purposes. Um, Next up is my shop powerhouse. I use my table saw for just about every project. Um, this is a Grizzly uh, five horsepower, 10 inch cabinet saw. I did make longer rails for it. This uh, is a Delta T2 Beesmeyer clone uh, T-style fence. Uh, it works really well. At one point I made new rails so that I would have a 49 inch capacity to the right of the saw blade. But I took it off because it was too big for the place that we rented between the two houses we lived in. Uh, Uh, my saws, I always use a uh, zero clearance insert on my saw. I made this one. You might notice on mine that there's arrows that say on and off. That is just so that I remember which way to turn the wrench to put the blade on and take the blade off. On this side of the table saw, I added this extension area here. It was longer, I cut it off when I changed the rails, but I did was able to retain this compartment here. And I'm always misplacing my push sticks and 
throat plates and my blade wrench and things like that. So I thought if I put it, if I put a little compartment here in this space, that would be great. And so far it's worked out really well. The only bad thing is it gets full, it gets full of sawdust from time to time, but it's nothing that a little vacuum can't fix. I'm currently storing my 13 inch rigid lunchbox style planer underneath the right hand extension of the uh, table saw. Uh, I built this cart some time ago. Uh, it's a flip top cart. When I lived in the other house and we had the two car garage shop, this was very useful. I could roll it out, I could flip it over, I could plane my boards, and then I could flip it back over and put it underneath the table saw, which is really important when you don't have a lot of space. So if you don't have a lot of space, this might be a great choice for you. Some people mount two different tools on it. They mount one tool on this side, one tool on the other side. But for me, I needed to be able to store my saw, store my planer. So this was the best configuration for me. To set it up, you just flip it over. And uh, I have a couple of window sash locks here. Just tighten that up. There's two more on this side here. Down here in the bottom is where I store the... Uh, the dust collection port and the two screws that attach it to the to the planer. This right here is my jointer. Uh, this is the one piece of the rough milling area of the shop that is not in the rough milling side. But uh, I find that this is a great spot for it because I have plenty of room on either side to pass long pieces across the, the bed of the jointer. Um, this jointer right here uh, is one of the few tools that I've purchased brand new. Uh, this was right around the time that Home Depot was clearing out their uh, large shop, large wood shop working machine. Uh, I actually got this for $100, brand new. Not sure if you can see this, but I do have this on, have this on a uh, mobile cart that I made. It is the simplest one I ever made. It'd be nice to not have it on wheels, but I kind of... I've had it on wheels on this base so long, I'm used to the height and I got a, I may have to build some kind of riser or something to get it back up to this height. So this is my assembly bench over here. This is my previous outfeed table, which I'm considering getting rid of. Um, it did work uh, for a long time and it still works. But one of the problems I have is that it's a little, it's a little wobbly on these thin legs here. And, uh, you know, I've just outgrown it. And I really need something with a little bit more uh, length for ripping long pieces. And turning my assembly bench this way, I'm gaining about six feet, six to eight feet of uh, support back here for long work pieces. So I'm thinking that's going to work out okay. Um, underneath here, I have a couple of my uh, Festool assist tanners. Not sure where I'm going to put those after I get rid of this table, but I guess that's something to be discovered uh, at a later date. Now, just real quickly, underneath all this other stuff is my old lathe that's gonna be retired soon. I made this cabinet under here uh, to store various items in the shop. Uh, it's not terribly visually appealing, uh, and it actually was much, it was actually longer. I think it had four, bay, four uh, rows of drawers in it. But uh, this thing holds a lot of stuff. Uh, the drawers are constructed with these uh, metal. These metal sides are the are the glides, and the sides of the drawer. You literally just add a front, a back, and a bottom. And you know, I was a little skeptical about whether they, you know, how those would work, but they've worked out really well. And I have all manner of things in these drawers here. Uh, I got those things on clearance somewhere, uh, super cheap. Over here, I have all my lathe chisels here. Uh, I'm going to be building a new stand to accommodate the uh, the Nova lathe. Uh, I have my chuck here. I have a couple of turning blanks. Uh, these are spalted maple provided to me by a good friend. Uh, and I have some uh, mini tools here. Uh, some of my Tromec uh, jigs there. The small cabinet here holds several of the accessories for the lathe such as tools for the chucks, uh, additional jaws for the chucks, wrenches, uh, all manner of things, you know, related to the, to the lathe. We're still in the assembly area of the shop. This is my workbench. It's made out of two by, commonly available two by four uh, construction grade lumber with a mahogany end cap. Uh, 
which is dovetailed on the other side. I'll see if I can get a shot of that. Um, this is this bench was was made primarily based off of Jordan Crawford's design of George Woodshop uh, on YouTube. He did a really nice video series on that. Um, if you wanted to try to build your own, you might want to check that out. Um, this bench has worked out very well. Uh, it really has helped with my hand tool work because you really need a stable surface for your uh, for hand planing. Um, and this one is definitely that. Um, and it didn't come out quite as heavy as I would have liked. So what I ended up doing was I added this cabinet down here and with these drawers. Now, I haven't really loaded them up yet because I'm working on a, ca a wall cabinet for all my hand tools and planes and things like that. I have a couple of uh, chisels and planes down here in these boxes uh, right now that need to go into the seg cabinet. And I also have, I drew board holes in the legs to accommodate my hold down, hold fast and bench dogs. I also made some of my own bench dogs. These are very similar to the ones that uh, I believe it's Marty Beck or Marty Back made on uh, YouTube. Uh, it has a little spring button thing here that you know allows you to put it in a dog hole and have it stay where you put it instead of just falling through. Um, that worked out really well. Uh, I got a tail vise here and I have a leg vise on the other side. Underneath the edge of my workbench, I have my Festool uh, CT dust collector. Um, this Fest tool, if you're not familiar, they have a system of tools and they, all their things work together. And this thing allows me to collect pretty much all the dust from my sanders and my uh, Fest tool domino and my track saw. This right here is my rigid oscillating spindle slash belt sander. Um, this unit right here is great. Uh, it's, a, it's an excellent spindle sander, but you also get the added benefit of having an, a belt sander attachment that uh, that operates like a small edge sander. Um, this has been a very nice addition to the shop. Uh, I also got this off Craigslist <laughs> um, for a very good price. Uh, you know, I don't know. There's not really much else to say about it. Uh, if you look online, it gets great reviews from everybody who's... I, it gets great reviews from everybody who's used it. Uh, it's a very good, very good sound investment for your shop. Where's my... I need to be able to see. Okay. A quick... Let's see. A quick note about my scroll, sand, scroll saw. It doesn't work. So I'm going to work on uh, getting it fixed. Uh, I haven't really had time, really haven't used it very much because I'm just not real patient when it comes to scroll work. But I would like to get it fixed because, you know, I might get bored one day and decide to do a little bit of fret work. This right here is my Craftsman 14-inch bandsaw. This is very typical of 14-inch uh, C-frame style bandsaws. Believe it or not, this is a very good unit. Uh, Someone gave it to me, the guy I bought my original Delta Joiner from. He called me up one day and asked me if I wanted a bandsaw. And I was like, yeah, how much? And he said, nope, just come get it. So I went and got it. I put new tires on it, uh, new blades, new guides. You know, just tuned it up real good. And it's worked awesome. Uh, the only thing I wasn't really able to do with it was resaw. But come to find out, it was just the blade. Uh, Maybe I should pay attention. Maybe I should take the advice that I read sometimes. Maybe here I have my Grizzly Tormek clone whetstone sharpener. This is a great unit. Uh, it is literally a fraction of the cost of a Tormek. That's not to say that I wouldn't buy a Tormek, but I got this one uh, for a really good price before I even knew what a Tormek was. Uh, and you can see that I have a couple of Tormek jigs here. I got a couple more in this cabinet down here. Uh, you know, it works really good. I'm able to get a good sharp edge on, on tools. I don't use it on my uh, more expensive planes and chisels just because I don't like the hollow surface that a, a round stone produces. I prefer a regular wet stone for that. 
but uh, it does work really well. And uh, I got the wood turners kit uh, the last time I went out to the show, the woodworking show in Atlanta, and I look forward to using that. This is know. the other side of my assembly bench. Um, over here, I have an old card catalog that I've, you know, put bottoms in and I use this to store various things right now. This is where my drill bits are, which you can see is very inconvenient since my drill press is way over there. A little further down the line here, we have another set of drawers. Uh, I was keeping sandpaper in here, but uh, that's something that isn't really working out for me either. Uh, not as well as it could be. And uh, this other drawer here is just full of electrical stuff that I'm hanging on to until I get the wiring done here in the shop. Now, this right here is also a cart that I built a long time ago. Um, the top isn't very flat, so I don't really use it for much. The space left over between the two legs of the assembly table were just about the right size to put this cart in here, so I figured, what the heck, you know, I might need a cart one day or something, and uh, I already have it. I won't, I'll already have it. I won't have to build it. Again, my name is Daryl. Uh, thanks for joining me in my shop today for my shop tour. Um, I realized that I could not possibly have covered everything in here. Um, over time, I would like to uh, maybe revisit the shop tour. Uh, certainly, some of the things that I missed may show up in future videos, projects, uh, discussions, uh, different things. This is the first video in the Dreadnought Woodshop web show series. So be sure to leave comments below. You can feel free to ask questions. You can suggest things. I want to treat this show as your show. So be sure to leave comments below. Be sure to subscribe to my page and like the videos. If, there, if, it's some, if there's something in the videos that works for you, be sure to like it. I look forward to having you back in my shop. And in the meantime, dread not and get woodworking. Have a good day.